we'll have a next. All right. So, moving face this. So, we start with sketch. As usually. Are you ready, girls? Yeah? Yes, very good. Very good. Eric? Uh, my cat is in the way, but it's fine. Oh, oh such a sweet kitty. <laughs> we should paint him one day. Then you can put a port. Oh, <laughs> he wants to be painting, yeah. actually. <laughs> okay. Nice, nice. All right, yeah, it looks complex. Yeah, but um, no worries, we will manage it. Yes, yeah, step by step. Yes. So let's start with the roof and the house. Yeah, let's kind of place it. Like, let's analyze how much it takes. Yeah, it takes almost half of our paper. Yeah, to have the house. Yeah, maybe somewhere here it's ending. Yeah, and then it's more than a half of wheat. Yeah, somewhere here. And then on top it goes the roof. Yeah, so it's as usually I just kind of approximately yes marking the 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 size. Yeah, and once I'm happy with the size, yeah, then I can start doing details. So of course I don't start with the windows or the doors. Yeah, I first kind of try to do the, the roof. Yeah, and if maybe it's, I'm lacking space for, for sky, then of course I can yeah, move it a little bit so I can plan chimneys. Yeah, very, very sketchy. Yeah, just over here, just a bit lower. Yeah, so one one chimney here is kind of in front. Then it's one here, yeah, behind, and there also one in front. Yeah, and very important to mark kind of this uh, thickness of of the roof. Yeah, so it will give our Painting, yeah, a nice, nice touch will make this feeling, of, yeah. And then there are some vertical lines on the house, just where kind of, yeah, it, it walls are, are changing. And, yeah. yeah, if you want, you can sketch very quickly a window, yeah, or one can then. And do other stuff and later come back to details. Yeah, so I'll be here. And the door, I see it a little bit. That's why I just kind of sketch. And maybe a little part just at the top. Yeah, so. And you already know, yes, the, the basic rules, how we find out where some object is, we always compare it kind of horizontally or vertically, where, where it lives. Yes, for example, now I want to mark um, where, where the sky is ending and the sea is starting. Yes, and then I see, okay, where horizontally it lives according to my house. Yeah, it's somewhere where this part of the roof or maybe somewhere part of the window. So of course, maybe this part is not so important. Yeah, the sea could be lower or higher, depending how, how we're standing or sitting. But um, still, it's this technique is always nice. Yes, when, when you want uh, to find yeah, the, the position, and it's normal to take, you know, the uh, another pencil and see it. Yeah, and later with time you will be able to do it just with your eyes. Yeah, you kind of spot, compare it with other objects, and yeah, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So somewhere here are the bushes. 
very nice yeah so we will also try to keep this part clean of this water where this little boat is yeah it's kind of a, a, a sweet part of of painting yeah it's always that um, yeah as a painter you always have to spot you know this this good good moments yeah that, that make your painting nice yeah like this maybe like this trolley yeah for garden yeah or the bench these, these are yeah and then yeah maybe i can mark yeah so then the the next big part is of course our garden yes and it's defined with this curvy line of, of path, yes? So we can go somewhere maybe here, flowers. Yeah, flowers, we are living to the end because with those ones, we can go really free, yeah? It's, we can make them more or less of them, it's, yeah? So here I'm sketching. So one line I have here where kind of the flowers are ending. Then we have this, the green part with, with some stones. Yeah, I just kind of sketch away and mark stones. And then we have the path, yeah? Again, look, I can, I can just for myself define, aha, uh -huh. so this path, so one part of it is starting kind of on one side of the paper, yes, on this vertical part. And another part of this path is starting here on the horizontal, yeah? This is like those little helps that, um, yeah, how I define my drawing, yeah, my, yes. And then, so we have stones just on one side. This side goes kind of flat and then we will have a bench. Yeah, feel free to draw a kind of, if you have space left, feel free to draw a bit bigger a bench. What is important in, in, in those objects, like both this bench and, and this uh, yeah, blue trolley of garden, you can see the shadows under them, yes? If you put without shadows, it will feel a bit weird, right? Maybe like the viewer of, of your drawing won't tell exactly what's wrong, but yeah, um, because our eyes, our brains are get used to um, to see uh, to see shadows. Yeah? So that's why when we look at the drawing and we want it realistic, and then yeah, it's just a little little lines of shadow and it, at once, yeah, you have the different feeling. Mm -hmm. yeah, so here also the the door of the garden. Yeah, it can be like also in a sketchy way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I give you time. Yeah, no, no rush. Yeah, it was girl's idea to paint a uh, garden. Yeah, so I. Um, I was preparing and I searched and this is so this is not my um, 
invented painting. This is a painting of one famous um, yeah, English painter from uh, from UK. Yeah, his name is uh, La Morna uh, Burke. And um, he actually adopted this, uh, this name, La Morna, um, yeah, as, um, as his artist name. Uh, it's actually the name of this area where he lived. So he painted a lot of this area. It's also called yeah, La Morna Cove. And, uh, it makes uh, Sounds really great. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I've, I've I've searched in Google Maps where, where where it's located. It's more actually up, like uh, more northern side of UK, like where Manchester is and um, somewhere there. But but obviously by the coast, yeah. It seems to see the beach. Well, so cool. um, yeah. Uh, if you have the path. Yeah, the, so with all this space for the flowers, yeah, what you can do, of course, you can take like really close look, yeah, at, yeah, it's original painting. So this one, of course, is mine, um, yeah, a copy. I already did it very yeah, approximate. He, he has it like very detailed, yeah. What you can do, you can kind of approximately sketch yeah, so maybe this lower side of flowers is always a bit, you know, darker. Yeah. And then we have kind of this big part of yellow, orange, pinkish. So I can mark yeah, this area. And then we have here some vertical parts. So I can mark, yeah, so maybe here are some vertical blue flowers, I see. Yeah, so of course it's, not necessary and impossible to mark a kind of flowers in itself. Yeah, and also I can do some lines maybe of these flowers that are going on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, so there is also there is some one more window, but it's kind of hidden behind the all this. Yeah. So very, very um, approximate, yeah. So, so the parts of the flowers, we see more just like spots, yeah, and the game of colors. And the rest, of course, we can uh, do more precisely with objects. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I see everything already, yeah, with the sketch. Still looking at something if I missed that. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Huh. Yeah, no, take take time to finish. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you let me know when you're ready to start. I will prepare. Yeah, how's it going, Julius? You ready? I think I'm going to finish 
through my sketch. All right, yeah. Cool. So, um, we need first. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, so then I'll, I'll remove the sketch. And yeah, we can start getting ready the, the, the colors. So we will start with the um, with sky and the sea, yeah, to make it uh, a background. Then I have just light, light blue, and we'll be mixing it with uh, with white, yeah. So lighter for the sky, darker for the sea. And then we will slowly go for the roof. Yes, and here you can see some brown, a little bit red, yeah, for um, for the chimneys, and then one can mix brown and blue, yeah, and maybe add also white and see, you know, for this kind of grayish, bluish yeah, roof in itself, yeah. And we keep house white, uh, just paper, yeah. And then those nice shadows, yeah, can also go with this dark, yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll start and then later we add other colors for, for the rest, yeah. So also, you remember that you can use paints either kind of liquidish, yeah, with more water on your brush, or you can use like less water, so just more paint, yeah. And for example, for for the sky, yes, I can use it more liquidish. So this means I will get it more more transparent, yes. Right. Yeah, so right here, the blue I have is a bit, maybe not so, yeah. Um, here, I'm also not worried about the strokes, because it actually can give me the feeling of, uh, of clouds, yeah. So there are some clouds, and... Um, Yeah, so one doesn't really have to fight the, the brush strokes. Because yeah. then later when it when it's dry, yeah, I'll have them maybe. Yeah, so flower. Yeah, so I've just colored the upper part. Yeah, and, um, and then for the water, I can go. Maybe let's say even just directly to the paint. Yeah, and then I make it make it darker. So there we have some kind of little island. Yeah. And um, yeah, be careful not to color the boat. Yeah, so just for here, maybe I already can change and go with more little brush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the rest of these parts, like under the boat, Kind of in between, there are some rocks or some trees, yeah. So, yeah, I can put maybe some light blue and then later I go top, maybe with brown. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, as, as, so I will be going, yeah, it's usually like one step a little bit in front, so then you can see. Yes, yeah, so I'm taking brown and just going with the, with this thickness of the roof. Yes, and what I can do, I can, and the, the lower side, yes, yeah, so where the roof is ending, I can make the line more straight. Yeah, so just going with my brush horizontally. And the upper 
part of this line. Yeah, so it's kind of, I can make it a bit kind of hairy, you know, because it's the, yeah, but maybe a little bit not. So it's because it's just going on top. Yeah, it goes mixing in with those things, what, what the roof is made of. It's made of kind of this, um, yeah, this building material and the roof. Too. Yeah, so this is kind of the way the roof is. And the next, so I already have some leftovers of blue. And I just mix with the with the brown. Yeah, but take a look so it's not maybe too, uh, too brownish. So yeah, and I can maybe add also a little bit of white. I want lighter. So my aim is to get this kind of grayish color. Yeah, it's really neutral. So then I can. And I can color the upper part of the roof. Yeah. yeah, so I keep chimneys. Chimneys are coming in red. Yes. Yeah, and if it's maybe too light. And then I can go to the center. Yeah, so. yeah, but of course, we also working as usually, we do something like a background. Yeah, we put the background color first. Then we move to another side of painting and then later we come back and do the details. Yeah? So, so it's okay, no worries. You know, you don't have to get it from the first time. The, this, this, the precise, you know, part. Yeah? Um, what we can do since we have this kind of bluish, yeah, color on on our brush. Yes, I can go also for the for the shadows on the house. Yeah, and then we move to the red because then it's, it saves us, um, you know, washing the brush. Yeah, for changing the color. Yeah, so here I put. They they look kind of bluish. Yeah, these these shadows. Yeah, so they're under this brown brown thickness of the roof yeah i can i can see this line yeah so this is, this is also one of the things you should remember that anytime you paint a house and imagine even if you paint it from your head yeah there is always always this shadow line where the roof is yeah because the roof always comes kind of over the yeah, over the wall, so there is always this shadow. Yeah, it's, you can never go wrong. And then again, if, if you don't put this shadow under the roof, then our brains will be like thinking, ah, oh, something is missing. Yeah, because we're get used to, to see, yeah, to see this darker line. Yeah, I've put also a little bit of blue. Yeah, where the chimneys are. Yeah, it's again since yeah, since we're doing blues and yeah, very nice. Look, it's already working. Yeah, so all these shadow things. 
yeah, one, one, one gets more practice with time, yeah, but uh, this is what makes yeah, the painting interesting and yeah, looks yeah, looking realistic. Yeah, so very a little of red. And again, I can just, just set one color of red. Yeah, so not worrying this, about the details. Yeah, so just putting red. And then later, I can come back and do the, the details. Yeah, so maybe looking, so it looks like a brick. Yeah, but I need to wait and then come back and do some lines as well. Yeah, so painting is also like often like planning. Yeah, so with, with our brownish color that we are using, yeah, can mark the, um, here the island. Yeah, this. If it's too dark, your brown, yeah, can add maybe some white. Now I got a bit too brownish. I will try a little bit of yellow. Have it not so. For example, in this painting, I try not to use black at all. So even in those parts, yes, where, where it feels like the shadow is strong, I just try to put very dark uh, blue. Yes. Because this is very kind of uh, vivid colors and yeah. So the black, the black is often um, yeah, very um, very easy to make it dirty. Yes, the black color. So in this case, one can try to. Yeah, so if I take very intense blue, yeah, then it can also work and then it doesn't have so. Mm -hmm. mm. So after that, we will take some greens. Mm -hmm. So if you have two greens, one darker, one lighter, take both of them. If you have only one green in your set, then you take this one green and you add the yellow. Yeah, and then with the yellow, you can combine and yeah, make two different greens. Yeah, this is also the typical thing we're doing because yeah, we want to show light and shadow. Yeah, and then with lighter green, we show yeah, let's say all these garden parts. And then with darker green, yeah, where the this the same green grass but is in the shadow. Yeah. And also, as usually, it's Always better to start with the light, yeah, because with the light you can cover also those parts that are in the shadow, yeah, and then later you just add shadows on top. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 
here I have my path and go with the green. Here again, I can maybe move to the bigger brush so it's easier. Yes, remember to wash it good. Yeah, and then, so I usually wash and then I also usually wipe it. Yeah, because still the paint is always somewhere there where this metal part connects with the brush. And then it often happens that I wash it, don't wipe it, and then I have this other paint inside. Yeah. So, yes. And then again, it's like putting just the base color. Yeah, just kind of getting rid of the white paper. So I am putting this grace, I go around the, the bench, I go around the trolley. Yeah, although where the bench is, yeah, there is some kind of green that should be looking through the, the back part of, yeah, of the bench. Mm. So for example, I can do a little bit of green here. Yeah, because then later maybe I'll put blue. And then I have this green looking through. Yes, and then I have a feeling that this back of the bench is a bit uh, it has holes. Yes, so there is also green. On the other side of the road, yeah, I, I am careful. Uh, I'm keeping, I'm keeping stones. Yeah, stones are white with some um, uh, bluish shadows. Yeah, so I just leave this part. White. Yeah, maybe a little bit green on the third of the road, but road of course will be a bit more kind of grayish, yeah? A little bit similar, like we did the roof of the house. Yeah, some, some kind of bluish brownish mix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if it's, it's getting too dark, one can, uh, Yeah, what can always add white. Yeah. yeah, am I going too quick? On the uh, graph, um, I haven't started the graph yet. Oh, okay, good, good. Then I'll. We'll wait. It's, um, I think it looks very nice exactly if we leave these parts of the house white, yeah, then all these all colorful surroundings, yeah, all these flowers in the garden, yeah, the green grass, and then exactly these white walls look very nice.
Yeah, and then of course, good if you have also small brush for details. Yeah, so imagine we're going to be doing for the bench and the shadows um, where the rocks are. Yeah, so it's good to have this uh, small one. Yes, and it's also easier to do all these small details if you if your brush is a little bit more wet. Yeah, you know this. Sometimes we use kind of dry brush technique. Yeah, and it also serves as good in some parts. But when I need to go, let's say here around the rocks, or make these lines of the bench, yeah, of the back side of the bench. Then, if I have my brush a bit more wet, then it's easier than kind of, yeah. But with, with time, you get this feeling, yeah, when it's not too wet, so it's all always floating, yeah. But still, it's wet enough so it paints, yeah. Because you know, if there is no water, then it's hard to paint. Um, yeah. Eric's little brother. <laughs> he woke up because he had a nap, so. Mm. Yeah. So what are your plans about coming to Ireland finally? Um, because you've been to Ireland once, I think, my mom said. No, actually, I have never been uh, in Ireland, never ever yet. So I'm really hoping to, uh, yeah, to visit you. I'm, I'm getting ready. Um, um, I still don't have tickets, but I'm, I'm really happy of your invitation. And yeah, looking forward. Hopefully, it's. it's I'll just Masha because she's been in. She's been to Ireland a few times. Yes, Masha is also, she's uh, also an author. She's also a friend of, yeah, she's from school. So your mom and Masha and me, we all were, went to school together, like you and your friend, Sean and, yeah. And okay. also mother, Christina. And Christina, yeah, you know Christina as well, of course. Yeah, Christina, lives, Christina lives in the uh, Netherlands. Yeah. I saw her um, when I was living in Netherlands for a while. Then I actually was a neighbor of Christina, but it was totally by accident. And I didn't know. And we just met by chance. It was like, wow, what a surprise, you know? So. And then you realize that she's your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was actually I met her in an in airport. Uh, just by chance, we were taking the same flight. And I was like, oh, and the flight goes to another town. So we would live in Den Haag. But the plane, it was also, I think, Reiner flies to another town. Yeah? And then you have to take a train. And then I, I meet her there and I say, yeah, but I'm, I'm living like in another town. And she's like, yeah. I also live in, in that another town, so it was like, oh, what else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like, what colors did you use for the bench? Because I just finished adding the rock. Paper. Yes, yes. Sorry, guys. I'm <laughs> sometimes getting impatient when I start painting. So I'll explain you. So I just took, uh, again, blue and brown. Yes, but I was using kind of waterish. Yeah, so that's why they, they see a little bit transparent. And this is also a trick. So first, you kind of take blue and a bit waterish and just freely cover almost everything. Yeah, what you need. And then later, you can just take a bit more dark blue and 
yeah, do this accent of, of shadow. Yeah, and then I did few few brown lines. Yeah, because we can imagine that um, the bench probably yeah from wood brown, but it has this bluish yeah maybe kind of shadowish uh, feeling. Yeah, so yeah, and actually I took kind of the paint from the leftovers that I have on my palette. Yes, this is also very typical that ones do. And then these colors maybe are not so intense as you take them from, yeah, directly from the paint box. And, the, and sometimes that's exactly what one needs. Yeah? Also like, let's say these shadows of the stone. Yeah, I just go kind of with the curvy lines. Yeah, very, very. Yeah. Yeah, and also, maybe I don't want to make them blue, blue. And exactly this leftovers of the blue that I have. Yeah, they help me. Yeah, so of course this painting lots of details yeah? and one um, for the details it's it's the patient but it's also normal that one gets tired in the details for example yes you start with one object and then like too too much too like too much work with with little brush and then what I do I give myself a bit rest and then I switch just to some big parts. Yeah, again, kind of. Um, and then when needed, I come back and do details again. Yes, and again, you see, so sometimes it's normal to forget, but compare, for example, the bench I did and the, this uh, garden trolley. Yes, and it's this garden trolley it doesn't have a doesn't have a shadow yet, but the bench has. Yeah? So if you compare this feeling of these two objects, yeah, then the bench at once feels is it's actually standing, yeah, it's standing on the on the ground, yeah, and in this the garden trolley feels something wrong, yeah, and once I add just these tiny blue lines, yeah, under the this trolley, then at once, yeah, it makes sense, and at once it's kind of uh huh, yeah, so. Shadows are you know, the part that one shouldn't shouldn't forget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then when we move to the flowers, then. Also, we'll get a bit more colorful and also maybe a bit easy. Depends. Flowers can be a bit easier, a bit harder to paint. Yeah. We'll see. Eric is using technique of. You taught me it. <laughs> I put uh, brown and then I put gray over it. 
so and then I just use a towel to kind of make the ground, uh, the brown and gray kind of mix. Yeah, nice. You see, and it also kind of helps, yeah, make it more, let's say, light. Yeah, sometimes when we get too dark with colors, it, yeah, because we all know getting darker is always easier. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, so my next step, so it will be still a little bit more detailing with a little brush. Yeah, I will take the, the this lightest yellow, the, the lemon yellow. And so I have both. And then I have the, the window part. And I have some, yeah, part of the flower. And yeah, so the boat is also like it's yeah, just kind of marking yellow boat there. Yeah, so this one is easy just, just because it looks nice, yeah. This this shiny. Yeah. So I can mark if you want, you can use maybe just black pen, for example. Yeah, if you're not sure to make these tiny figures of people there yeah. It's, um, yeah it it depends how how thin is your brush and how yeah so feel free also take some And then we go for the window. So the window is also looking very colorful. So here it is one part. Yeah, one part looks yellow and the other one looks a bit green, more green. Yeah, it depends. You can Yeah, so this is kind of the frame of the window. I did yellow and one part I did green, so it's also connected like, to the shadows. Yeah? Um, one part is always more sunnier. And then we know that when it's the daytime, the inside part of the windows are always darker. And when it's the nighttime, and let's say, yes, the light is on inside the house, then, um, then the opposite, the window in itself is, uh, is very light, is yellow. Yeah, so this, this case with a daytime. So we see there kind of two windows are open. Yeah, so that's why here in between, I put this dark kind of just again, dark uh, blue, yeah, not, not using black. So then it just gives the feeling. And then I also just with this my with my small brush give kind of a contour. So it just feels kind of a bit maybe open window there. Maybe there is kind of a and something like it. And again, the same story. As we learned about the roof, that there is always shadow. There is also always shadow under the, yeah, a little bit under the window, because it has, yes, the same. Um, yeah, it's all connected because it's when it rains, and of course all these parts of the house they have to go a little bit over, and then uh, the water is not damaging the walls. So that's the story with the roof. Roof is always a bit over, but then it rains. It's not touching the wall, and with the window, the same. Yeah, the windows they have this usually, you know, metal part outside. Yes, and so and this part also always giving the shadow. Yeah, also. Put. 
Yeah. I can mark also here a little bit this door, also dark. Yes, maybe it feels maybe also. Yes, I put. Yeah, but kind of just not it's not whole part, but just one corner of of the door, because then later we have the flowers covering. Yeah, so. Yeah, and then one more window. If you want, you can skip the second window that is kind of behind the flowers. Yeah, I'm putting there very light blue. Because um, then later, yeah, we're going to go all over with the greens and these plants. So I don't want to make it too dark. Yes, I'm going to skip it. Yeah, I have now. Um, for example, I go and make darker this side of the house a little bit, yeah? Because it, it, my paint dried already and I could see that it's a bit the same lightness, yes? And since I made this, this door dark, yeah, it's normal with, with many, with some parts of the painting, we always come back. So it's not the way that, oh, I've painted there already. So with some, some parts, we, we come back and we make darker. Yes, I can, for example, now come back to the chimneys, make maybe a few darker lines. Yes, so maybe some lines to show it. it's brick. Yes, if, um, yes, if, if you feel you know, brave and your brush is thin, you can do some few lines. Yes, of course, many details, yeah, in this painting. But we have time, we still, oh, one hour done already, yeah, that is okay. Um, with the flowers, yes, yeah, so when I, I told you to prepare this lemon yellow, yeah, and we did the boat in the window. We shall also do just, um, again, clean good your brush, if you've been using the same brush before getting into this yellow, because you want it really, really clean, yes? And we will gonna set this yellow part, and we're gonna try not to touch them uh, with, with other color, because, like this, we are saving the, yes, we are saving this, this light. So I choose some spots. And again, you can go a little bit over, yes, and do a little bit more of, yes, of yellow, because later it's, it's just easy to go on top with other color. Yeah, but, um, yeah, the parts we put, we also try, so there is some on this lower side, yeah, here somewhere horizontally. Yeah, and there is also a little bit here on top where this green part is. Yeah, and it's it shows kind of light. Yes, so um, Yeah, that's, that's why it's important to keep them clean because it's the light. Yeah, so here I've sit. There is some these yellow spots, and then I'll be going around them with orange, with pink. Yeah, then we have also some, there is some blue, purple. Yeah, and yeah. And as 
suggest also going uh, as always from light to dark. So since we had yellow, the next I would take, let's say, orange. Yeah. And I will take orange and maybe put some pots in between. Right here, kind of filling up all this area with different spots. So here on the right side, a little bit more. And of course, I can get in between these yellow spots a little bit with orange. Yeah, so kind of mix mix it in. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to keep this clean, yes? I'm using clean yellow, clean orange. That's not making it uh, dirty. Yes, then it feels sunshine. What else? Pink color. Pink color is also one of the light ones. Yes, and if you feel your one is too dark, you can always mix it with some white. Yes, so maybe with white. Yes, and again, here in between the yellows and in between the oranges, I feel like the space. And don't worry if you go too much, because later if we go with the with the green, we can create the shadows with green and then Yes, and somewhere I can see maybe the dots, let's say, have the feeling of flowers. So not only just covering the spots. So a little bit maybe dotting. So you can have a feeling of. Um, yeah, shall I wait or how are you doing? Um, I have to wait for mine to dry to add in some more detail. Okay. Yeah, it's always, if you, if you are waiting to dry for some part, yeah, there's always Kind of technique that one can uh, move just painting some other side of the painting. No? Okay.
my cat just came out of nowhere and he just is just meowing. Meow. <laughs> you. <laughs> So to continue with the um, with flowers, what we have left, I will go. Uh, so again, I will use this technique to have my paint a bit more watery, and it means a bit more transparent. And I will go kind of in between, filling empty spaces. Yes. And then later, where needed, I can go with some. Um, uh, with some darker green, yes? So in this case, I'm putting some green and... Yes, we also have their a bit purple and we will do it uh, the, the next, the, the, the afterwards. The purple is darker anyway, yes? And then I can do a little bit of greens so with this watery light green i'm kind of feeling the space in between the flowers where i have white paper left and i can also go to do some these strokes on the wall yeah but not too much careful leaving the walls white because it looks very nice when, when the wall is and also, I put green here on the bottom of the flowers. And there, we will be putting both darker green and also a little bit of blue as a shadow because it's always darker in, the, in this lower part. Yeah? The flowers in itself, they put shadow. So here, I should divide a little bit Yes, so the, the green of, um, of the yard. And then I have this shadowy part of flower. Yes. And of course, I can put some darker green spots somewhere in between all of these colorful flowers, because of course they also form some, uh, some shadows. Uh, And then with the darker green, I can go also here where the house and the window is. So I also don't forget here is here some bush also. So where we, we had this island and and the boat, yeah. Also something greenish there where the difference is. And here I can go also with a little bit dark blue here on the bottom of the flowers. Yes, so the way I show the shadow there. Yes, if needed, can go a few more strokes around the stones. Yeah, and like this, slowly, slowly, step by step, we have our 
painting getting more huh? finished in person. Yeah, and then now it's already we're getting close to the moment of yes, any painting that we do. Then when we start already sitting back from time to time and looking at the whole, yes. And it's it's called uniting. So one always when, when doing things and at some point moment should. Take, take a break, look, and then see where one can unite. Yes, because it's very typical that that we get uh, yes, very very separate from things. So um, yes, it can be maybe some parts of the of the flowers of the grass that we want to make um, a bit more. It's kind of together, yeah. So it so it looks not separate but together. If you have purple, you can use a bit of purple as well. Yeah, maybe for some flowers here on the top, or maybe some flowers here on the on the wall, or maybe just pinkish. Yeah, also just to give a bit more color to this upper side. Yes, but you still see that the walls are being kept kind of green and white. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's dark green missing somewhere in between your flowers. If they look too, yeah, too bright, it's, yeah, it's also good to have a bit more green spots in between, as if it's a it's a shadow. Yes, because all objects they have um, the shadowish part. Yeah, and then it's always the moment when you see if you want to come back to some details. Yes, that you feel maybe is missing some. This this part uniting that I'm talking about is also very good for the part that maybe one is not really clear what's what's there. Like let's say yes, this part above the the entrance gate, yeah. Some, there is something green or blue, not really. Yes, one does this kind of unites, put one common spot, and let's avoid also you know, the viewer maybe looking there because it's more just all more together. Mm -hmm. I think I finished. You finished, Julia. It's very nice. I'm very curious to see. All right. 
not a bit tall, but tall. It's the garden. Yes, you are improving your skills a lot. Nice. Now waiting to dry. Yeah, then the favorite part of taking masking tape off. Yeah, but very slowly. Yeah, I will also maybe take off mine. I remember we once did a drawing, and that's when I still used masking tape before I still uh, before I had any. Like I still had some, and mm -hmm. I remember painted a picture, and I forgot to take off the masking tape, and it, it because I had paint over it, so it kind of blended in with the picture. Uh huh. And I used masking tape, so. I'm just looking through my pictures and I realized that there's some tape sticking out. <laughs> and I realized it was masking tape and like I had it there for like a month or something. So. <laughs> yes, you've colored it so much that it got hidden. Yes, then once again, this painter. Oh, I'm very noisy with my. So the name of the painter is La Morna Bird. It's B I R E H. And, and he lived, he was born something 1865, I think. And he lived almost 100 years. So he lived till 1955 or something. So, so 19 years or so. Yeah, and yeah, you can find in Google many of his paintings and 